the story of modern india friends today i will tell you a story this is the story of 400 years this is the story of anarchy subjugation and betrayal this is the story of a village named india in this village there are somewhat 20 to 22 houses village is mostly self sufficient and prosperous there is no shortage of resources as such village is famous for its cotton and spices historically people from other lands would come and trade cotton and spices for gold and wine far away there is one more village which is not that much self sufficient they need spices for survival they also need cotton for some reasons their traditional route was blocked so they explored and discovered new routes now many traders could come to india they would take cotton and spices in return for gold traders would earn many folds when they sold these goods in their own villages trade flourished indians encouraged trade traders would come from far away places so a village headman permitted making a hut for comfort and protection of traders belongings many traders built many huts in the period of 150 years in the western part of the village one house gave shelter to an english trader the house gave permission to build the hut as time went by this particular trader without taking permission from the owner started building a fence around the hut encroaching the area of the house head of the house and trader got involved in a fight when the house head raised his voice the trader shots him down trader backstab the house trader is a snake sleeve he bites the hand that feeds him trader is a clever fox he has gold a gun and is a bad bitter he takes advantage of the situation and annexes the whole house rest of the houses of the village couldn't do much because they were busy fighting with each other this english trader in particular takes advantage of these fightings slowly slowly one by one he weakens every house and himself becomes strong now the trader has become a business tycoon virtually ruling the village one by one he takes down every house and installs his watchman now affairs of houses became a subject of the trader trader was corrupt trader was enjoying power with almost no responsibility this trader made fortunes this particular english trader became so rich that even his own countrymen envied him they even started conspiring against a trader set up enquiry made some regulating laws to level him down a headman of an english country under his counsel made laws which regulated the trader but the trader would always find a way around the law gradually the whole village barring some royal houses comes under his control maintaining law and order collection of taxes becomes the work of this particular trader trader managed everything his company was now a big enterprise with hierarchies a proper bench of directors and committees he even hired villagers for work he would keep higher posts for himself his family and friends and small posts labor work to villagers he made new rules interfering in every household such was the life and philosophy of a trader don't know why he used to think i am civilizing this village of barbarians but little he knew he himself was a barbarian few houses tried to raise their voice but the trader had a gun and professional security trader's capacity to deal with laws and to inflict damage is also increased rest of the houses were not that resilient earlier the trader used to bring gold from his house for purchasing cotton and spices but now that gold has stopped he would use the money of indian locals collected as tax to buy cotton and spices and sell at double the rate in his village earlier gold used to come from outside but now it has totally stopped indian money is my money english money is my money such was the life and philosophy of this greedy trader this particular english trader 
new villagers were not united. They won't raise their voice collectively and even if they did, how they would stop my bullet. Many villagers tried to raise their voice, a farmer, a gatherer, but how would they stop a bullet with mere bow and arrow? They would try, mostly in vain. Something was about to happen. Trader was a clever fox. He built roads in the village so exploitation would reach every nook and corner of the village. He created a communication system so he can mobilize his security swiftly. He tries to build a school so that they could get cheap labor. Even he hired Indians to protect his system from Indians. One fine day, a trader got a taste of his own medicine. A thing happened that shook the very ground beneath the feet of a trader. His own security rebelled against him. Houses of North United, trader was left terrified, mortified, petrified and stupefied. Trader sensed that the end was near. Trader somehow managed to win the battle but he was removed from the village on the charge of misgovernance. An English country who had not enough of India installed a new system this time. A system of British Raj and a headman. A new headman replaces a trader. This particular headman tries to bring modalities of his village to the village of India and was focused on good governance. Now he is more careful so that no such ground shaking incident occurs again in future. But the loot continued. Industrialization in headman's country was sponsored by de-industrialization of India. English was getting richer and richer day by day and India was becoming poorer and poorer. Whenever evil flourishes in India, the righteous will take birth. When colonialism flourished in India, feelings of brotherhood arose. Some educated villagers spread this message among the people that for common good, we must stand together. Outsiders are on loot, we better stand together. We all are one and this headman is exploiting us. For the first time, this feeling of oneness arose. Villagers came together, stood together and a feeling took birth. We all are one. We did great things in the past and we want to do more. We have to teach a lesson to an outsider. Villagers started making groups and brought in front the bad deeds of the headman. Some educated villagers came together and formed an organization. Every year, for three days, they would organize meetings and plan something against the headman. Some would say, though the headman is evil, he is good for India. He is teaching us their method, he is bringing modern education. He will skill the youth and eventually, this will lead to development. But bad benches of that organization used to think differently. They wanted to end all of this in one fight. They wanted self-rule. They were like, if we all come together and just spit, these foreigners will get washed away. Headman was afraid that his cash cow would slip away from his hands. This was a chance for the villagers to become free. Everything was going well. But then, differences started taking place between front benchers and back benchers. And the thing that held India back haunted Indians again. Crab mentality. If I can't have it, neither can you. Fractions started pulling each other's legs. Where two fight, a third one wins. Organization splits. Headman breathes a sigh of relief. Backbenchers were severely punished, their leaders imprisoned, and frontbenchers lured with carrots. Headman announced new laws and used religion to create more rifts in India. This rift haunts India still today. Some revolutionaries emerged in this time which took violent means. Eventually, they were either caught or killed. Prayers, petitions, boycotts, violence, all were tried and tested. India needed a new strategy. And this was provided by a man, English returned barrister. He comes to India, visits each house of the village, understands problems, solves the problem of three small houses, he becomes an overnight sensation. Yes, already there was hype about the man, but the man proved himself. The name of the man was MK. His fighting style was unique. Neither he had stones, nor guns, nor bombs, but he had a tool, Satyagraha. Struggle for truth via non-violent means. 
He was courageous and he wanted to instill that courage in fellow Indians. MK would announce, from tomorrow onwards, no one will help the headman in his work. Total non-cooperation. Headman would remain puzzled, troubled. How to run a village if there is no help from villagers? Headman would sometimes use violent means against the villagers and sometimes villagers would retaliate, but mostly they would remain non-violent. In case of violence, MK would get arrested. MK would say, you can punish me for my wrong deeds, but it is my duty to raise my voice against injustice. The eyes of the jury would get filled with tears. They would say, such a righteous suspect. It is a privilege to hear your case. MK became a superstar of the masses. Villagers would get crazy for one glimpse of MK. MK was calculative with his methods. He was aware of the capacities of villagers. His movements would spread like wildfire, but sometimes he would stop them abruptly because he has his own strategy. Though he was confident, this strategy was difficult to digest for many, especially to some youngsters. They would take violent means. Most of them would get caught, shot, imprisoned or hanged, but they would inspire many to join the movement against headman. At times, the headman would introduce illogical policies such as tax on salt. Next day, MK would announce, from tomorrow onwards, no one will obey the law. He would start a march. Students, teachers, workers, businessmen would join him. MK would say, less than two miles a day, in two stages, with not much luggage, child's play. Headman would get shocked, perplexed, stupefied, mortified, petrified. He was left with no option than to take a step back. MK was not alone in this fight. He was joined by Chacha, Sardar, Bose, BR, Maulana. Many sacrificed their lives in the struggle. Lala, Bhagat, Chandrasekhar. There is a whole list. The list is so long that one video is not enough to mention them all. One day, MK said, Bahut hua samman Pradhanji, pack your bags and go back, go back to your home. We were silent all these days, abhi hum violent ho jayenge. MK said, do or die, every property of the headman was attacked. Bose was fighting on another flank. Headman left shocked, puzzled, troubled, perplexed, stupefied, mortified, petrified. This time, Pradhanji had no other option than to leave the village. But... Shanti se jaye wo pradhan kaise? Headman divided India into two pieces, one for the master, one for the dame. A tragedy ensued, civil war and rage. Punjab and Bengal divided artificially. Many lost their lives. Bitterness still clouds the fate of village today. Ek hi thaile ke chhatte bate would fight, kill each other for artificial line. Headman leaves India. India made a new law for the people. Many royal houses joined the Union of India. Sardarji played a crucial role in consolidation. Panditji became the new headman. Now, India again walks on the path of self-sufficiency and development. Today, villagers are busy in their lives. Everyone is fighting their own fight. People speak various dialects, dress differently, follow different religions and philosophies, but India is one. At times, scene create ho jata hai, but this is the story of every village. The Indian economy has been growing since independence. India is the largest democracy in the world today. Nowhere in the world, people would come together and vote to elect their head in such a large numbers. Yes, there are some problems like unemployment, corruption, education, healthcare system, pollution. Fight against them is still continuing. Entrepreneurs, CEOs, scientists, doctors, artists, economists are coming out of India and making their contribution in world building. Some are representing big, big companies. And yes, a hell lot of engineers are also there. This story is also written by one such engineer, translated by another and edited by the third. So this was the story of modern India. There may be some flaws, but this is a work of fiction. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead or actual events is purely coincidental. I hope
hope you guys enjoyed the story thanks for watching